Welcome back to the Union Street Podcast. Today we have from all the way from Sweden, Morgan Bintel. Thanks for being here, Morgan. Yes. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, all the way from Stockholm. It's I'm really excited to have you on our podcast. Yeah, excited to be on it. Our audience is familiar with you already, mm -hmm. uh, Morgan. So we're going to get into your story about coding and just what life's been like, man. Yep. So thanks for being here. So we're just going to jump into it. Morgan, you are a freelance software engineer for Spotify. That's right. Currently for Spotify, yeah. And that is such an interesting world um, that I'm excited to get into what you're currently working on, mm -hmm. what your connection to Southern Illinois is. Right. You travel 4,000 miles to get here. Yep. And a little bit about what you like to do for fun, because you have a very interesting life. Uh, and I'm really fascinated by it. So thanks again. I like to have fun, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's just jump in, Morgan. Yep. So what's your connection to Southern Illinois? So um, I guess I was in college in Sweden, in Uppsala. Um, three-year program and then I did a uh, one-year um, study abroad kind of exchange program uh, with U of I, University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign um, and I went there oh, yeah did I say this was 2014 um, it's August 2014 I went there um, it's a fun town yes very fun yeah very much party <laughs> yeah college town atmosphere <laughs> yes uh brothers red lion you know, <laughs> those places joe's joe's for sure on green street yes uh yeah it was a great time and uh while there i met uh maggie your sister and shout out maggie yeah, shout out to maggie we love maggie we love maggie that's that we do um <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so i've been coming down here I guess for the last seven years, probably maybe, well, not so much during the pandemic, right. but more or less once or twice a year, I think. Yeah. Um, during those years. So yeah, I'm starting to like getting to know the, the little roads and the, oh yeah, we're on 13 right now coming home to the house soon. You know. Definitely. You, you're <laughs> becoming lingo. more localized. Yeah. A little bit more. <laughs> so you graduated from Champaign uh -huh. at U of I. Yeah. Or I didn't graduate from oh. there. but So I did my exchange year there. And then I went back and actually finished my degree in Sweden. So I did total four years. It should have been three, but the exchange year extended my college life by one year. Cool. Yep. So uh, that's why I'm here. So how's, how's your trip been here so far? You've been here, like you said, many times over the last seven uh -huh. years, seen a lot yep. happen. So how's it, yeah. how's it been so going? So, you know, flying to Chicago, uh, direct flight from Sweden, which is very convenient. Get on the train from Union Station. What is it? It's about six hours down here to Carbondale. Um, yeah, and then we, we went, actually went to a wedding. Well, you were there, obviously, <laughs> uh, in Iowa. Uh, just outside Des Moines. I've never been to Iowa before, so that was pretty cool. What did you think about that drive? We drove from Southern Illinois yeah. to St. Louis, through Missouri, uh -huh. up through Iowa. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, you might think it's like just going to be cornfields, which there is a lot of, but I mean, we drew, drove through some pretty cool places. Like, what's that place called? With the Hannibal, Missouri. Yeah, Hannibal, Missouri, with the Mark Twain like thing <laughs> yeah. going on. And yeah, like, his yeah. birthplace. Yeah, Des Moines is pretty cool. Too. Yeah, really nice town. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to Andrew and Danny for having us at the wedding and the whole Mullenbrox. That yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a hot day. Very uh, hot. Yeah. Was it 103 or something in it the was, sun? Yeah, it, it was brutal. <laughs> yeah. But so you've been to a few weddings. In, oh yeah. In, in America. Yeah, we went to another one in uh, <clears throat> uh, Missouri. Uh, no, Mississippi. Sorry, uh, Oxford, Mississippi. Oxford. What was that? 2017. Or something. Something like that. Yeah. That was a, another cool wedding experience. Never really figured I would go to that many weddings in the U.S., but yeah. <laughs> I keep getting invited. <laughs> hey, keep coming. We, we love having yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So, f 
for myself, and I know a lot of people listening to this, we aren't, I'm not familiar with software engineering. So I'm just going to ask mm-hmm. you a couple questions and yeah, sure. You know, what is software engineering? Um, software engineering is, I guess the, the craft of writing code to make the computer do things for us. Um, so, I mean, it's so ubiquitous today, so it's kind of hard to <laughs> say what it is. It's, I guess, like, what what isn't it is a better question, and I don't even know the answer to that. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's anything from, like, controlling your traffic lights. Airplanes fly by code nowadays, as far as I understand. Um, cars, there's a lot of code in cars. There's a lot of code on the internet, obviously. So all the websites, you go to the bank, they have computers that are programmed to, well, move uh, money from that account to that account. And you know, it's just so much. It's <laughs> basically, <laughs> it's kind of a hard question, actually. Yeah, and yeah, every, but any aspect of life move, moving yeah. forward. Yeah, I guess. Like, I can't really think of anything right now that doesn't have computers involved with it. But yeah, I mean, you write you write text um, on the computer, and then that text <laughs> gets compiled into something that the computer can understand. And yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like hard to explain, really, if you haven't like you have to dedicate some hours into it sure. to, under, to really get it. Um, yeah. I mean, I didn't get it. I started programming before I really got what I was doing. Like it took a couple of years to like, like you can be in parts of the software stack. So we call this so like you have the hardware at the bottom, which is like someone like um, soldering stuff together, like microprocessors on the chip, on a silicon chip. And then you can go like all the way up to, I don't know, like we talk about cloud computing, which is like pretty abstract. So you have all the different parts of the stack where you can be as a software engineer. Um, And usually people don't really know what's going on on the other levels of the stack. I mean, some people do like, and they're great to have around and work with. (laughs) Uh, I try to learn as much as possible about the different um, parts of the stack, but I guess I started kind of high up in the like, uh, information systems kind of work where you basically write programs to store um, data in a database uh, or information and you write programs to retrieve it kind of like you're, you log into your internet bank right um, that information gets loaded from somewhere from some server it gets presented like you don't really talk ha- that much about how um like what microcontrollers you're using at that point. You're <laughs> you have other problems to consider. So um interesting. Yeah. How'd um, you get into software? Um so yeah, that's like kind of weird, right? You don't really know what it is, but you feel like you want to get into it. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Yeah. Curiosity? What's yeah, I how'd guess you get interested for a in lot of people, all? I guess it starts with like um gaming like sure and not necessarily the gaming itself but like i guess all the hoops you have to jump through to like get gaming like you have to build your or i don't know what it is like nowadays but back when i i guess in like high school pretty much no sorry junior high that would have been um i bought a computer from a classmate and it was kind of one of those where you I think they had assembled it themselves with all the different parts and you kind of have to grok around with it to <laughs> like make it work. Um, there's some piracy involved <laughs> with like um, different software and like getting that to work. I guess you just kind of, you don't really know how it, wor- how it works, but you kind of have to, or your mind kind of has to, create some kind of understanding of what's going on in order to like make things work. Like something's not working. It's like, "Mm, maybe I should go into this place. 
A lot of and exploration, yeah, experimenting, exactly. trying, like, seeing what you yeah. how to Re- reading online. Like something's not working, you're reading online and then yeah, someone's like someone will tell you to go into this thing and change this from a one to a zero. Like literally, that could be a thing. So you um, have to yeah, wow. Yeah, and then it works and you're like, Wow. Wow. <laughs> so um Sounds like the Matrix, you know. <laughs> yeah, ones I mean, and zeros that's, and ones that's and kind of how it is in the beginning. Um, but then, actually, in Sweden, the high school system is a little bit different from here. So, I guess here you will go into high school, and everyone will kind of have the same um, like curriculum or what do you call it, like plan, study plan, whatever. Um, but in Sweden, you kind of pick your kind of like a major. Mm-hmm. Um, that you have in college you pick it already in high school so um um yeah i guess you're forced to make a choice and i didn't really know what i would wanted to do um I, so i just figured i'd pick the one that kind of will keep a lot of doors open uh which is a like natural science um sort of major um and then you could pick that with like a flavor of math and computer science um so that's where I kind of got really started with it. And I, c- I remember the first like programming lesson or class that we had. I remember being outside the classroom. I'm like, I'm, I have no idea what's going to happen in this room. <laughs> yeah. And then we did it and it was like, oh, okay. I kind of get it. Or like, that makes sense. Sounds like almost <laughs> going into a foreign language class. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's literally what it is. It's a foreign language. Yeah. yeah. A lot of math, right? Yeah. um, I I, I guess you can, you can have like a software career without too much math. Um, But if you're kind of mathematically, what do you say, like inclined, then um, you could have a lot of fun with that too. (laughs) Wow. So, yeah, there's a, it's a wide, like it can be, you can choose kind of what you want to do, how much math you want. So my college program, which was, um, uh, it was called information systems. So it's not like computer science. It's a little bit lighter version of computer science, actually, which is one of the reasons I wanted to go to U of I to get like, because I kind of like, hey, where's all the like math and stuff? <laughs> so that's why I went to U of I. Yeah, great <laughs> but, school. Yeah, good school. Yeah. Um, a lot of hard work. Hardest work I've ever done in college, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like much harder than Sweden. But yeah, so um, what was I going to say? Um, don't remember. Well, uh, basically, you were doing information sciences versus um, more of the math side mm-hmm. in high school. Yeah. And that's the track that you were headed. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought there. It's okay. But, um, yeah, so I guess one of the pros of not having, like, the, like, heaviest study, like, like um, burden, so to say, at university in Sweden, it's like it, I got kind of a lot of time to explore stuff outside of the the courses that I was taking. So I would, like, kind of, do some programming stuff outside of um, outside of uh, the coursework that we were doing, which was, I think that was kind of a good thing because otherwise you like do the bare minimum to just be able to finish all the, the homework or whatever that you have. So well, there's a, gen- uh, a curiosity there, a genuine curiosity. Oh yeah, that for took sure. you in and wanted so, you to um, yeah. explore more. Yeah, it's uh. I really enjoy it. It's like, it's a very satisfying kind of practice. You know, like, I don't know if you've seen that on YouTube or at least myself, I get a lot of recommendations from like woodworking people. They, they do like kind of, um, yeah, different like woodwork. And that's like pretty satisfying to watch because the pieces fit very snugly and uh, it's so smooth. And like, it's kind of like that doing software if you do it nicely it's satisfying in a 
in that way, kind of. There's a a payoff, you know, you Yeah, for sure. Dig in. Yeah. Crunch the whatever you do, inputs mm-hmm. and numbers and like you said, that having them line up and yeah, and it's, how you want it to yeah. behave. And, and it's both about the result and about the the quality of the finished software because it could be, I mean, something can work, but the quality can be crap. But um, so yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a lot of like the the craftsmanship goes into not only making things work, but also making it work in the future. Or making it easy to change. I guess that's kind of where the word software comes in. Like it's soft. It's easy to change. As opposed to hardware, which you can't really change. So, yeah, that's one of the main jobs, really. To make software that is easy to change. For other people and maybe yourself. Sure. Sometimes you'll go back to code that you wrote. And you'll be like, who did this? And then you look it up and like, oh, it's me. <laughs> Why did I do it like that? So that's yeah something you have to work on. Well, it sounds like uh, any organism, any good you know ability to adapt mm-hmm. to change. Yeah, that's really you know that's interesting aspect. Yeah, that's one as you're building one of the big aspects. Code. Yeah, and so how does that transition into your current work now as a independent software engineer? I know you work for Spotify mm-hmm. currently, but you yeah. have a whole journey. Yeah. Um, so I guess after college, I was in this um, kind of large uh, Swedish consultancy. And they had uh, a trainee program, which was for one year. And you would go into these different projects or different client projects and uh, have a different roles in each project. Um, so you got to learn a lot from that. And then after, I guess, the one year, you got to kind of pick which one you wanted or maybe they would recommend one and you could say, yeah, that's fine. Um, so I did that for about three, four years, I think. Yeah, four years. And our main client was basically this one Swedish bank. So I worked on different projects for that bank, different parts of the, like, the the products that they have. Some are more server, backend, as we call it, um, stuff, but also like the the front end, the uh, the website that you log into to do your, to pay your bills, to do transactions and buy stocks and funds and things like that. So that was uh, what I was doing for a while. And then some of the people who worked there they wanted to kind of start their own business. So they did that. There, I think there was four of them. And then one more guy from on somewhere else. They started their own business, like a consulting company. Um, <clears throat> and then they they asked me to join them maybe a year later. And so then I guess I was kind of brought on to that ship. I was like part owner. And um, yeah. Then we, they were like, so what would you like to do? Because <laughs> like, I guess we had our um, meeting where we like agreed that, yeah, let's start. I'm going to start with you guys. And um, they were like, what do you want to do? And then I said, yeah, well, I would like to work for one of the like supposedly like nice uh, big tech companies that we have in Stockholm. I guess we have a couple. I think Spotify is probably one of the top uh, top, like ranked as um, one of the most attractive uh, employers employers in Sweden. Um, so I f- felt like that would be cool to work there. Yeah, Spotify. I mean, it's like a unicorn tech company. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's everybody here. You know, Spotify. Yeah, uses I mean, Spotify. I think they have about. I think they released some figures yesterday or the day before, and they have like four hundred something million customers wow. maybe they're not all paying customers but yeah it's a lot of people use it so yeah obviously it's like a if i could get the opportunity to work there i would take it so i so i guess the way it works when you're a contractor at least in sweden i don't know about here so much <laughs> Uh-oh. 
right. That's all right. <coughs> just start over. Um, or are we just going? Yeah, we'll just keep going. Okay. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so most people don't know Spotify is a Swedish company. They don't? I don't think so. Really? Not here in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's this one guy from uh, the Rågsved, Stockholm, who started it. And uh, maybe he lives in the U.S. I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah, anyway, so I guess the way, because if you're a contractor, I guess you don't really apply for the job listings or postings that they have out. So you kind of, well, in this case, you kind of have to go through one of these uh, consultant kind of bro- brokers. <clears throat> and so I guess I talked with one of those and he kind of arranged uh, for an interview with one of the managers there. And I think I had an interview with the manager and then a kind of a technical interview with two of the engineers on the team. And then, yeah, I waited a week or two and then they say, yeah, you you got the job. So it's kind of less formal than the regular hiring. There's not so much HR involved. I think it's more direct, like manager needs people, talks to broker, brings out a couple of CVs, interviews them, picks one. And like, as opposed to like these like huge screening processes that I think usually happen when you're looking for a regular type of employment. Um, so there are pros and cons with that, I guess. But yeah, I, I guess I was kind of fortunate to get kind of the first one that I applied for. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> um, huge. I mean, going yeah. from your job um, with your mostly working for the consulting at mm-hmm. the bank. Yeah, kind yeah. of safe job. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then yeah. saying, you know what, there's this opportunity here and, you know, setting your this is who I want I want to work mm-hmm. for you know the top company in yeah. the country yeah and going for it, it worked out and then getting <laughs> it yeah it worked out um yeah it was uh kind of lucky I guess some sort of leap of faith or confidence mm-hmm. in yourself and mm-hmm. what you can offer to, yeah. to be able to do that sure yeah I guess you have to have some type of confidence yeah that's that's right I guess the one of the hardest, like if you want to do that transition from employee to like freelance or contractor, I think one of the hardest parts, at least in Sweden, because we usually have these like notice periods of like three months is what I had. Um, so if you you have to tell your manager, like, I want to, I'm quitting. And then you will be working there for the next three months anyway. So, and the way you get these contract jobs is usually less than a month like um, sort of process so you start looking um, and then when people are hiring contractors they usually want them like yesterday so you have to go like more or less two months not knowing what you're gonna do um, and then like when this last month start starts then you kind of have to find something quickly if you I mean maybe it's okay to be without a assignment for a month or so, but yeah, it's like, uh, you're kind of locked into that. Like, unless you're willing to accept that uncertainty, uh, you're kind of stuck. So you gotta have that confidence to make that kind of take that risk, I suppose. Um, it's a process sounds like getting there. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I had a tremendous help from the guys who started the company that I ended up joining. But, um, so I guess, yeah, that would be a good way to do it. Um, I guess if you want to start out like totally on your own, I guess then you, I would say you kind of have to have something arranged, um, or not have to, but you have to be very confident that you can get something. (laughs) Yeah. Sure. And so what was that? You got the interview at Spotify and... It was, that was in that one month period of you still having yeah. working for your previous position. Yeah, I was still working there, and um, I guess this was like maybe a couple of weeks before 
um, it was supposed to start. So, yeah, I got the call when I was at my other job. And then that's a good feeling because then I knew what I will be doing after I quit this job. <laughs> it's a good phone call. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. good news. Yeah, it's good to have a good to have something lined up. Yeah. For a dream company. I mean, yeah, that was right. That was great. Yeah, that gave me a lot of like the boost of my confidence for sure. Yeah. So did that. And this was, I guess, the start of or this was I started, I think, the maybe middle of March of 2020. Oh, which, boy. Uh, yeah. You kind of see where that's going. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I was uh, I was there for, I was a new guy for two days or three days or something at the office, and then they announced that everybody would be working from home. <laughs> so that was kind of hard to be like newly onboarded contractor and um, starting to work from home at this like big company that you like really want to make a good impression on and stuff. So yeah, that was kind of a kind of a experience. But, but say luckily. With your line of work, oh yeah, y- you're yeah. able to do it basically anywhere. You have a uh, access to your laptop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the transition was basically seamless, thankfully. Um, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's very like privileged, obviously, to be able to keep working um, at this kind of like when you're already balancing all these things, like you're taking the risk, and and then something like that happens, and you still get to do it. Like that's. Uh, that's very good. Yeah. So did you go over mostly remote? I mean, with like Zoom meetings oh, yeah. and yep. the whole bit. Slack. A lot of Slack, I guess, would be the main uh, means of communication. But yeah, like Google Meet. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Those yeah. tools. Um, some, um, yeah, I guess some specialized tool for like pair programming and so on. But mostly the Slack and the, the Meet. And how long were you remote what what was that um i guess i've started to transition back now Mm -hmm. or i guess now it's uh, open for anyone but most people are still working from home yeah (laughs) at least partially um i don't remember exactly when it was i think they tried to start opening it up at some point but then it kind of spiked again (laughs) yeah so uh but i would say maybe earlier this year was when it was like when people started going kind of regularly and like they you didn't have to like register to go to the office and so on. Thankfully, I have my own office as a, a consultant. Me and my oh yeah, I guess we didn't really talk about that part. But I guess after this um, um, company that I joined with these all these guys from my old job, I um we decided to split that up because we kind of didn't all want the same thing and so on, which was kind of inevitable. Um, really thankful that we did it or that they did it and I was able to join because I don't know if we would have had the courage to do it otherwise of doing it together like that. But yeah, after a while we decided to kind of split up and do our own thing because we were kind of already doing our own things mostly. But yeah, so one of one of the guys from there is my good friend from college. Shout out to Carl. Uh, we started our own... Um, kind of consultancy together. Uh, and we have an office uh, in central Stockholm where, yeah, we can pretty much do whatever we want. And I was able to work from there during the pandemic, at least at later later stages of the pandemic. I was able to work from there. Um, so, yeah, um, didn't have to work from home too much. There was a transition period, I guess, between the two companies and offices and so on. But... Yeah, we have our own office, and uh, so I am pretty much there every day. Then I guess at some point, circling back to the <laughs> coming back to the office, um, yeah, I started going maybe once or twice a week, which just seems to be what <clears throat> people in general, like across different industries, seem to prefer to go in like for one or two or three days a week, and then maybe most people work from home. I work from my own office where we like play this like ice hockey game. And yeah, we have fun there. Startup sort of coding. <laughs> I can imagine like uh, the atmosphere there. Yeah, like a youth, uh, youth hangout. 
keep it fun. <laughs> Break yeah. up the the work day. Yeah, you know, you're coding, locked in. Mm-hmm. Got to take a break. Got to step away. Yep. Shake off, you know, yeah. the dust and dive back in. Yeah. Super I mean, we were, we were playing that. We should put a picture on that if you can. Um, how what it looks like? Well, we were playing that at like this like first company that I was telling you about the big consultancy. We were playing that game like as uh, as a break thing, and we've been doing it several years. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, I do the same thing here with the piano, mm-hmm. guitar, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, we have a guitar too. I've been thinking about buying some some digital drums actually. I just haven't had the I've been having some other I've had some other stuff going on, but that's the plan. <laughs> it seems like there is an endless opportunity in your line of work to work across different industries, across different continents, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, from remote, from a computer, yeah. wherever you're at. Sure. And I think there's just going to be more and more need for that for as the future goes. Mm-hmm. What would you say to someone that wants to get into software engineering? Um. Well, I guess you would need, or I would recommend some type of formal training. Um, I went to college for it. I wouldn't say that's like strictly necessary, at least not to learn the skills. Um, maybe to like, like as a sort of barrier that employers put up to hire people. Like you probably have higher chances if you go through a, get a college degree in like computer science. I mean, that's like a, I guess that would be the, if you have that, then people are going to be like, oh yeah, they got a computer science degree. Like it, they're okay. <laughs> but at least in Sweden right now, it seems like a lot of people who want to get into it, they take these, it's kind of like a trade school. It's called like trade, trade university or something like that. <laughs> Higher education for trade. Um, and uh, it's a, I think it's a two-year program where I suppose they get more experience with programming, practical experience, than I got through all of my, um, at least in my program. I don't know about um, the like strict computer science programs. They're probably more thorough than mine was. But yeah, these these ones that I'm talking about, they... Yeah, I think they get a lot of practical experience and they learn the things that you will actually use uh, for a job. So if you want to go from kind of maybe another industry career into software, that's probably what I would recommend to someone. But if you're, let's say you're younger, you're, yeah, I don't know how old you are. You start one college. of our kids at our kids camps, uh-huh. for example, yeah. you know, if one of those kids, mm-hmm. how would they get into it? Software engineering. Um, I mean, I guess to someone who's young, I would recommend going to college, I guess, because, yeah, that's probably, well, I mean, college is fun. (laughs) So if you're able to go to college, like, that's probably the best way to get a software engineering job. Um, I'm not sure what community colleges here offer. Uh, I'm sure they have things like that as well. Um, So, yeah, I couldn't really tell you anything about community college but maybe that that's similar to the like kind of trade thing that I'm talking about in Sweden so uh it's possible that that's uh a, d- a good path as well so are some of our students are ages from 5 to 14 is mm-hmm. there anything that they can do to get their feet wet to be even mm-hmm. exposed to that concept yeah right sure. now Yeah, I mean, I don't have too much experience with it, but there, I know there is something called uh, Scratch, which is is kind of like it's meant for younger people to. I think it's more like visual, a little bit of drag and drop. You like make make the duck swim that way. Or I don't know. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit. I guess it's to, to sort of uh, get your thinking like get you thinking in the ways that you might use later in programming. I'm I'm sure there is some like actual programming in there as well. Um but yeah, I would look I would look into scratch. Sure, uh, to have those building blocks. Yeah. 
and like i mean or if you're like really into it just like there are tutorials i don't know i'm sure there are tutorials for younger people too to like do the use the tools so like we would use like at the job um different languages like i don't know python javascript really popular languages to start out with look into tutorials for that i guess figure out something that you like would want to build um as opposed to just like learning about programming concepts because that can be kind of hard when you don't really know what to do it's easier to set out on a goal and just like okay how do i how do i do this like okay maybe you have to break it down into little sub goals but then like you can google like um i don't know print name on screen and like you could figure out how to do that and then you could like go from there and just yeah. like add it up i guess that's <laughs> that's what we do anyway like you just go to go to the google yeah. and ask a lot of information out there yeah and actually that's i think a really great way i think you're right for a kid to learn something you know i think about when i was learning the guitar mm -hmm. it's like well, you're going to learn to play this song yeah before you learn any anything yeah. you know so you get again you mentioned you do it and you get that payoff mm -hmm. in the end like right. oh look what i did i played a song i wrote this piece of code yeah. i you know you can yeah. see it I mean, I think that's the, I mean, when I, cause I guess I do these things too, to like learn new techniques or technologies and, and languages. Um, so, I mean, and doing that, I guess one of the biggest challenges is to uh, figure out what to do and uh, to keep yourself motivated and like to have a project where you like sort of have to explore and figure out the answers to all these like questions that you might have. Yeah, Sure. How, how, like, how do I, yeah, I was Googling stuff, like, last week, like, how am I supposed to do this using this language, and there's, like, discussions online, and so you kind of, it's just, it's not going to change, like, that's how you start, and, like, that's how, what it's going to be like for the rest of the, <laughs> yeah, of the time. What are some of your favorite types of software to work with that you enjoy mm -hmm. the most? Well, I guess... I do like, so one benefit of being in software is that you get uh, very quick feedback. Like you build, uh, like you change, you change some code and then, yeah, you pretty instantly you like, you get the answer whether you did something good or something bad. Um, and I guess one of the areas that is even more so like that is like graphic stuff. So it could be like, I guess web would be the, like the most common like for user interfaces really but i guess web is probably the biggest part of building user interfaces today um but that's a very um very quick feedback loop um which i appreciate and i guess especially within web i mean yeah you can build buttons and little forms and stuff but i guess the most fun part of that is doing these types of animations and really like graphical things um that's a lot of fun i like doing that and then i guess you use something called css css cascading style sheets uh it's like kind of the technique technology that you use to do um animations online on the web um and then Actually, I'm doing a side project, like a hobby project right now. I'm following this book. It's kind of a tutorial where you basically build uh, like a 3D renderer <laughs> using uh, this technique called ray tracing, which uh, it's kind of a simulation of how light behaves. And there's quite a lot of math involved in there. But the results are pretty realistic. Um, and I thought actually, I thought it was... a uh, like a kind of theoretical thing that didn't really have a practical use. But then I was showing it to my brother who's like really into gaming and stuff. And he was like, oh yeah, that's like, that's that's coming soon. Like ray tracing as like a way to render more realistic lighting in video games. Like graphics cards are getting like hardware support for ray tracing. And I'm like, oh, cool. So I'm actually doing something that has some, <laughs> some real-world use. So that's pretty cool.
That is cool. Yeah. That's coming down the line. And I know we talked a little bit before we were recording about that, you know, how to create shadows and mm-hmm. all different types of shapes Yeah. by... Was it isolating a pixel? Can you explain a little bit of that? <laughs> I'm not yeah, so, I mean, ray tracing is pretty specific. Um, but, yeah, it basically works by, for each pixel that you want to sort of render, you simulate the ray of light kind of back, backwards, going from the camera, bouncing maybe on some objects. So you have to determine whether the ray hits the object or not with some math, and then eventually... Um, basically you have some light source, obviously you have to have light to have an image. <laughs> um, but basically f- um, figuring out what color that pixel should be based on all these like physical things, like what angle does it bounce on the on the sphere? What color is the sphere? Is it in shade of a different object? Will that light ray bounce like straight into the straight into the light source? Then I guess that pixel is going to be pretty bright. So. Wow. Kind of things like that. And then I guess with this book that I'm doing, it's um, you build on all these like materials that have these different characteristics. Like you end up doing like glass. So the light kind of goes through the material, changes the angle a little bit depending on which angle it enters the glass with. Um, so really like kind of those things that you, or that I at least learned in high school physics, um, which I was like, when am I ever going to use this? Um, but yeah, it turns out there, there it is. <laughs> yeah, practical usage. Yeah, so that's some, so some physics, some math. Um, it's very guided, so like it's not like I know all these things in my head. It's like you get a lot of help from this book that I'm following. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's fascinating. Taking those what you learned in physics, mm-hmm. those properties and laws, mm-hmm. and yeah, turns trend. out you can just put them into code and like it works. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty amazing how that works out like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like you encode the rules of the laws of physics into code and then voila. Wow. That's mind blowing. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, but that's how like all the games, like you jump in Super Mario, like there's some acceleration going on there. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's just so many different possibilities i guess it's just as you know limitless as a paintbrush as you know anything yeah really maybe even more yeah it's uh you can do some cool things i mean and then you have all these like buzzwords that are currently like all the blockchain and the ai ml iot like internet of things like yeah there's a lot going on vr AR. Right, the metaverse. Yeah. But yeah, I can't get into that stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sure. But it's all code. I mean, at some point it is, yeah. There's a lot of um right now I think there's a lot of selling going on too. <laughs> well sure. <laughs> but sure, there's uh definitely code involved. Yeah. Is there is that your favorite part about doing code? Which part is that? Well I guess I should say Ask just what is your favorite mm. part about okay. doing code? Right. Um, yeah, I mean the most, like as a, as like a little hobby, like satisfying little project. Those, or I guess at work as well. I've done some graphic stuff at work too. Um, but yeah, that's like, I like that a lot. But then there is like, there's always, like you read some article about. Some part of the, like some like closer to the hardware stuff, and like, oh wow, that's pretty interesting. Maybe I should work with that. Or, oh, you read about VR and like, oh, that's so cool. You could do all these things with it. Like, I want to go into that. So like, I don't know what's <laughs> where I, where where I will end up. Sure. But there's certainly different opportunities. Yeah, we've and I guess you have to you have to kind of be determined about learning about these things because it takes a lot of work and you can mostly do it in your free time. Um, It's kind of hard to, especially in this, like this, like frontier tech um, sector. It's like, I don't know, AR, VR, machine learning. Like you kind of have to be 
um, very knowledgeable to get into to get working in companies that do those things I think or that's my understanding at least yeah, yeah. wow it's really it's really we'll something see. yeah well I know AR VR is coming down the pipe and we've talked about it on the podcast before oh yeah but being able to travel and have those experiences in a headset and yeah you know it's a whole it's a whole thing whole frontier you said it yeah yeah <clears throat> and what is what would you say what would you say is the most challenging part about that type of work um well i guess the part that people don't think it's going to be challenging but it's very challenging is like how much communication there is uh, going on like when you're working on a relatively big team in a very big company there is so much communication that has to happen to for for things to run smoothly and even like between different programmers developers engineers um managers all these different roles have to like have pretty pretty good communication so i guess there's this like um what do you call it like stereotype about programmers being like off on their own like not really talking to anyone else i mean i'm sure that happens but it's not really ideal it's, you say it like that yeah yeah you have to have that human interaction yeah that back and forth yeah. working with a team even though yes. you're in the code language and in yeah and i mean that's the challenge like you're there's a really good essay um i think it's called the maker's schedule and manager's schedule like there are people who are the makers like the programmers who kind of like have to have long interrupted parts of the day where they can actually like do stuff they have to communicate as well obviously and then there is like the what do they call the managers which are people who don't necessarily like have to have those hours um uninterrupted where they produce stuff they have to communicate like that's their job to like make sure things are up to up to whatever um but um up to code <laughs> <laughs> something like that <laughs> um but yeah um uh, but the, uh, yeah the problem i guess is that um we're not really allowed to have that long, those long interrupted um slots of time where we produce because there's so much communication that has to happen but so there's like this big pull between these two like we have to have meetings to figure out how to do things better but we also have to spend the time to actually do the thing that we are supposed to do because otherwise it won't get done we'll just be talking about it so i think that's a pretty hard like balance to strike and um, if you can be at a if you can be at a place where there is a good balance between those two i think uh, that's pretty good for you yeah, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah. You know, finding that balance in your work, what you're doing in life, Yeah, you know, and being able to do things that you want to do, you know, even outside of work. And Oh, yeah. That's a big part of it, too. Not that's working. a big part of your life, <laughs> right? What you do outside of work. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe we can transition into some of those Mm-hmm. Uh, adventures uh, that you've been on. I know you've traveled, it seems like everywhere in the whole world. Well, not really, but. Well, a lot more yeah. than someone listening to this, probably. Maybe. I don't know. Probably. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I've been to a different, few different places. Um, yeah. With my friends. Try to, try to do these trips every now and then. We have this, like, um, kind of uh, arrangement I think there's yeah there's four of us where it started out as like one of the guys he was like i think we were maybe 23 or 24 or something and he was like listen like it's not it's not going to be like this forever where we can just like <laughs> just like spontaneously pick up and go yeah to yeah to like d go on like longer trips or like i don't know more expensive trips bucket list items yeah. sort of thing right kind of, yeah um, because they're, yeah, 
there might be our life situations might change soon um well that was kind of the the inspirational <laughs> speech that he gave so he was like yeah let's save up uh, let's save money together and go on a trip like every two years i guess is the kind of cadence that we're trying to have um got a little bit disrupted by the pandemic but um so yeah the first so we save money every month in the joint account and the first trip we did with that kind of arrangement was we did um what do you say you climb we didn't really climb we were mostly walking but we walked up uh, mount kilimanjaro in tanzania 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 africa yeah africa yes it's a uh, it's africa's uh, tallest mountain so so we did that it's like a seven day kind of thing where you basically start off in the jungle like shorts maybe like tank top um and then you work your way up you work your way up um sleep in a tent um yeah you live outside walk for several hours like i don't know between four and maybe eight hours a day um the air just keeps get getting like continually thinner the headache gets stronger and stronger <laughs> um and eventually you're at the summit and it's like what is it like 5800 meters not sure what that is in feet but 15 16000 feet maybe yeah something like that probably Six, 18 maybe even 18 times 3 roughly wow yeah, somewhere there it's very tall yeah it's pretty tall um and it's like a glacier and it's freezing cold um so yeah, you have to like bring your whole wardrobe more or less <laughs> from like yeah, from like watching monkeys swinging in the trees to yeah, freezing cold and like yeah, very cold. <laughs> and thin air. Thin air. Not yeah. a lot of Yeah, very dizzy. Um strong headache, lots of ibuprofen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to have your blood oxygen level checked before you do the last part of it because like if you have if your oxygen level is too low like you're not going to be doing very well <laughs> yeah fortunately we all had um high enough levels so we were able to do it yeah so that was really cool um that's awesome yeah. that you guys all pitch in every month to mm -hmm. do some sort of adventure yeah like that yeah. and then Sort of that payoff again. You get that satisfaction of yeah, I walked you gotta chase for that days. Satisfaction <laughs> from the jungle to the ice glacier yeah. to the top of the peak, where it's probably is it like the moon up there? What's it like? It's kind of like looks like the moon actually, or it's more like this. Like maybe before it gets like freezing cold, then it's really like the moon. It's like dust. I mean, I guess it's a volcano. So like, yeah. Um, a lot of rock and dust and yeah very moonish landscape i guess it's like a mountain so it's not totally flat um not many animals at that point some like ravens pretty scary <laughs> um not much vegetation no there's these like weird looking trees bushes but then i guess that stops at some point and then it turns into this like ice landscape which looks like kind of like the then you kind of feel like you're on that one planet in Star Wars where they're fighting with those uh, right, walkers. Luke, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the ice planet. Um, but yeah, very satisfying. Very nice to get your beer when you get down from there. Take a shower. Oh, I bet. That's probably the, one of the most thorough showers I've ever had. <laughs> I'm sure you needed yeah. it. Yeah, I did for sure. A lot of sweat, and dust and you can imagine, I guess. And then I guess a headache kind of dropped, which is nice. Subsides once you get down to yeah. sea level. No, it's not sea level. It's actually like 2,000 meters where wow. you, the base is, or like where the park starts, I suppose. Um, so, but then I guess eventually we went down to sea level. But where I guess you're first, like where you first sit down afterwards and have a beer and like take your shoes off, that's about 2,000 meters. Still pretty high. So what's that? Maybe 6,000 feet or something. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty high. It's still pretty it's high. It's like maybe taller than the highest mountain in Sweden, I think. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was very cool. And then I guess after we do this, like, kind of exhausting things, we like to go to some beach or something. So we went to, um, what's it called? Uh, Zanzibar? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> I forgot. Zanzibar for a while to just like relax and hang out. Beach vibes. Yes, very much. Reading books, drinking drinks, and eating at the restaurant. Yeah. Is that, I mean, I'm not, I've never been to Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, is there, is there like a lo- language barrier there at all? Um, I mean, with the, I guess this, this trips and these trips that we've done have been quite organized by well companies that organize trips for foreigners. So the guides that we've had, like yeah, maybe we should mention we had guides. We have a guide for this trip, and yeah, they, I mean, they speak obviously. I mean, they speak multiple languages. Um, I guess Swahili is at least in Tanzania. It's a like the common language, as, as I understand. Um, but then I think they have these uh, like local languages too. Um, maybe the guides don't speak the same like local language, even though they're from kind of the same area. But they will have Swahili. And we obviously speak spoke English with them, which is not a problem at all. They were able to tell us about the, what's going on, the nature and what's going to happen, what to do, what not to do. In like so, yeah, not a big issue. Yeah, for us, yeah. So that was that one trip, and then I guess yeah, when was that? 2018 maybe. And then so I guess the plan would have been to do the next one in like 2020, 2021 maybe, but yeah, for obvious reasons that didn't really happen. So it kind of kind of got pushed until earlier this year actually. So in May we went to. Um, there's a river between uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe. It's called the Sambezi River. So <clears throat> what we did was uh, kind of a canoe safari. Wow. Um, on that river for about a week. Um, so we kind of, we went to the capital of Zambia and drove out to this like kind of base camp, maybe you would call it. And, um, yeah, from there, we packed a big, like, this is all organized, obviously. So it's not like we just, like, drove out there and figured it out on our own. But, um, yeah, packed a big truck, I suppose, and uh, drove out to this launching site with canoes and packed up the canoes, like, big, like, cargo ships because we had to bring all food and stuff. And, um, yeah paddled down the river for a week sleeping on the just like on the bank banks of the river every night um our guides were they cooked all the food for us which is very 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 nice um yeah and we were just watching all the animals and enjoying the evenings by the fire and yeah drinking some beer and Enjoying it. I feel like that would be the thing that I would want to see I- in Africa would mm-hmm. be the animals. Yeah. Like, what were you... So take me inside that it. canoe. What were you <laughs> seeing? Was there... Um, so I guess a uh, typical scenario would be, like, we were paddling down the river, and then to the left, it's like, oh, there are some hippos. And, like, you see one hippo, like, kind of looking up, kind of like a crocodile, you know? You see the eyes and the nose. And... Then, like, another one pops up, and another one pops up, and then they start doing their, like, <laughs> to, like, kind of get you to scare you away. Um, and then they would, like, kind of move closer to us, and I guess they would kind of want to protect their, their kids, so they send off the, like, the bigger ones to sort of chase us away. Wow. And then at some point, I guess they would stop and kind of just, like, shout at us, like, <laughs> do their noises and um yeah fortunately they never um attacked us 
but they were mostly like marking that like hey get the hell out of here this is our turf <laughs> yes. you're in our waters yeah they're pretty so i understand they're pretty territorial there was a story right on that same river that somebody was taken <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess we asked our guide our tour guide i mean i guess the first night we were like so come on tell us what's the what's a story <laughs> what's the worst thing that's happened and i guess um I guess he had not had any guests like die on his trips, but there is, um, I guess he knew other guides who had had guests being like children being taken by, <laughs> it's really horrible, wow. <laughs> taken by crocodiles and like never found. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's pretty insane. I don't know if I would take my kids to that. So crocodiles. Yeah. Like, you know, this like typical, not like, Alligators, I guess they're, I guess alligators are like maybe a little bit broader. I'm not sure which one's which. But yeah, crocodiles, and they get pretty long, like pretty big. And I guess as opposed to most of the other animals that are there, they like don't try to like scare you off to protect their kids. They see you and they see food. <laughs> Apex predator. Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, they could like, or they, if they decide to, I guess, they could attack you. Um, and that actually had happened to our guide uh, once, where he would, I guess he had his arm a little bit outside of the canoe, and a crocodile came up and, like, kind of bit him by the elbow, kind of, tried to pull him in, but he was able to get out his knife and kind of, like, stab the, the crocodile. Um, A survival mode. Yes, um, yeah, he it's got kind of fun though, right? In that line, like a croc <laughs> might come out and try to take one of us under. I'm ready. To yeah, I mean, I guess he told us this at the end of the of the trip, so we weren't really uh, okay. I mean, I guess we we knew That's to probably avoid for the best. We knew to avoid crocodiles, but I mean, you could imagine our elbows were a little bit like closer to our bodies after that right. on the last day, and like our feet were certainly not hanging out of the canoe or anything like right. that. Right. So, yeah. What like, other animals did you see? Uh, we saw uh, a few elephants, maybe 10 elephants wow. or more. It must have been like 10, tw- 20 ele- elephants total. Cool. We saw, actually saw a lot of elephants, like even before going into the water. Like when we were launching the canoes, we were having lunch and just like two like kind of groups of elephants just came to like very close to us and were drinking water or I guess they drink from the river um yeah so we were sitting and having lunch and we haven't even started the safari and we we're already seen like 10 elephants kind of up close so and then we saw more on the on the river we would like see the elephant kind of stop behind them and like sneak up and kind of crawl in the in the grass closer to the elephants and they would like see us i suppose but they were pretty chill about it so and we were we weren't doing any big movements or loud noises we were pretty discreet so so elephants uh well obviously like i would say more than a or probably like a thousand hippos like so many hippos wow um a lot of birds a lot of um um baboons we saw impalas um uh, buffalo, water buffalo, I think they're called. Crocodiles. Um, yeah, that's about it, I think. Well, no awesome no cats, really. Yeah, yeah, it's very awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's so unique and just really cool to have that with your friends and mm-hmm. be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, very, like, very cool. I mean, people write stories experience. about yeah. these kinds of things, like novels and movies and... You know, living out these mm-hmm. awesome adventures fit for a yeah. lifetime. I mean, the the paddling thing, even like, I mean, I guess when we got back, people were like, so, like, why would you do that? Like, how did you hear about that? And even the guides were like, how come you're doing this? Like, I mean, that's their job, but they're, like, surprised that we we're there, right? <laughs> so that's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, I think I read about it in some, like, old article, maybe, like, 15-year-old article online. And I guess... The way we select what to do in this like this arrangement that we have is like 
we each do a presentation. It's kind of like, kind of funny, but like also a little bit formal. Um, so yeah, we, and then we vote on what to do. So that's how we kind of selected to do this. And how would you, would you recommend anybody listening to this? Why would, why is it, why do you do that? Why? Well, I guess compared to sitting at your desk coding all day, <laughs> like you kind of, or we, I mean, we do some like hiking and paddling and stuff in just in Sweden as well. Because we, I guess we'd like to be, we share that interest to be out in nature. But I, I guess, I don't know, you just want to do something extra, I guess, sometimes. And if you're able to, like, I mean, we're all kind of young, don't have big families um, or any family. So we're kind of able to put away that little money and save up and, yeah, go do something kind of out of the ordinary, which is very enjoyable. <laughs> and when you come back to Sweden, sort of a reset, I would imagine you yeah. going to have this awesome adventure coming back. Yeah. The sure. fresh perspective mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Sure is. It's, um, yeah, I mean, the, you think about these places like Africa, I guess, like it's obviously a very big place and you think you have some kind of grasp of, I mean, you can read a lot about it and like you can be knowledgeable about history and about all these things. But then when you go there, I guess you kind of get this like sense of like, wow, all of this is going on all the time. And like, I guess that feeling is just, uh, you can't really read about it or it's like when you go there, you're like, wow, there's these people like live their lives all day, every day. And I guess that's true for here as well. And like everywhere in the world, like, yeah, it's just a interesting feeling. It's a cool perspective to have to, and then take back and gives you a little more just perspective on your own yeah. life. Yeah, sure. And maybe a little more appreciation mm -hmm. of what you're doing, where you've been. I mean, totally. It's like a, I mean, being a, like a young white software engineer today is like probably one of the most privileged positions you could have. So like, yeah, it's, uh, I'm thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Or, well, it's good, you know. man. You live a cool life and, you know, Sweden is a, a great place. I was supposed to come visit you and oh, Maggie yeah. yep. and everyone in 2020. Mm -hmm. We had plans. Yep. The tickets were booked. They were. Uh, Cause I know you guys have an awesome life there. And like you were mentioning, you guys do all kinds of fun stuff in Sweden too. Mm -hmm. With the canoe recently into sailing. You bought a sailboat. Yes, I did. Together with my friend Fabian. We, I mean, we don't really have a, I guess sailing is kind of hard to get into unless like your parents or today, I guess that's how most people get into it. They have a parent or some kind of relationship to it in their family. Um, so yeah, we took, we took this one like uh, course last summer. It's like dinghy sailing laser. It's a model of the boat. It's called laser. Um, so we did that because we were like, that'd be fun. Um, sailing seems cool. Let's try to get into it. So we took that course and then that was in the summer and then in the fall, I guess throughout the summer we were looking like um, to see what's on the market to buy. And then in the end of the, or in the fall, we bought a boat, like a 30 foot sailboat, like a cruiser. Um, it's kind of old from, I think it's from 76. Wow. <laughs> but uh, pretty well kept like engines original and everything but it works um it's been a lot of upgrades done to it throughout the years but yeah so yeah um that's a big boat yeah it's fairly big it's not a toy it's um, a big vessel yeah it sleeps about five people wow if you want to depending on how close friends you are um <laughs> but um yeah so i guess we've been taking it out to sail like shorter trips um so far, we've stayed over, 
or slept in it <clears throat> once. Uh, but next week, actually, as I go back, we're planning on going for a longer trip, about a week, me and Fabian, to like kind of get the get to know the boat for real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just so. like the uh, software, you know, there's really, you have to experience it. You can read about it, watch the yeah. videos, you, but really yeah, you diving it. into it. You got to do it. Is the way yeah. to learn. And that's so cool, man. It just seems like a, such a challenge. It seems challenging. It is challenging. Yeah. I injured myself. Um, we're kind of trying to figure out if my leg is broken or not <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty swollen. Um, if it's broken, you're one tough son of a gun, man. Yeah, no, I don't think it's broken. Let's but, hope not. But yeah. it's just, it's swollen, yeah. yeah, and pretty miscolored. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just went on a short, like uh, it's supposed to be like an hour trip, just like take it out, show some people the boat, and and yeah, we got into a like a storm kind of, and got this pretty pretty wicked jibe, kind of squeezed my leg <laughs> in a bad way mm. so, yeah and like i guess that just shows that we don't really know what we're doing but that's also kind of how you learn you gotta just jump into it i guess you take some risk um but try not to make the same thing twice <laughs> exactly right? if you yeah. do that i'm gonna learn i hit yeah. my head i'm gonna Duck yeah. next time or yeah. get, you know. Like get out of the way. <laughs> but it's, again, goes back to that satisfaction again. It's the mm-hmm. challenge. It's that when, with sailing, imagine being on the water and just the natural mm-hmm. beauty and the waves. Yeah, I mean, when you're going like six, seven knots with no engine, no fossil fuels involved, that's pretty satisfying. And then when you get to where you're going and you like tie up to some tree or whatever and you open your beer, like that's pretty good. Yeah, harnessing that natural wind Mm -hmm. to transport this vessel i mean that's just really cool man yeah i mean it's not new but it's pretty pretty impressive still classic (laughs) i mean yeah you know that's cool yeah people have been doing it for a long time yeah and like outside of stockholm there is uh we have this like archipelago which is very very well suited for this type of like leisure sailing so there is like a lot of islands and I bought this book just about this thick, like two inches thick. It's like 400 good places to stop for the night. <laughs> so you can just like open it up and pick a place and go there. Um, so yeah, uh, that's been a fun project. So more sailing. Hopefully as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Learn more. Um, I'd love to come. Yep. And You're very welcome. Uh, hop on the sailboat. Uh-huh. Check out Stockholm because I know it's, yeah. You know, really cool place. You know, the in the summer it is, yeah. The biggest city in Scandinavia. Yep. Sort of the hub that, of that part of the region yeah. of the world. I'd right? say so, yeah. Yeah. The other ones are like Copenhagen's pretty cool too. I think it's a little slightly smaller, but it's it's also a very cool place. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, we gotta get there, man. And yep. it, so from this whole conversation, is there a, you know there's certain themes, but is there any any bit of advice you'd give somebody out there or your younger self about just life in general, whether it's work <laughs> or fun, that <laughs> re- leisure, that relationship? Yeah, is yeah. there something you can <clears throat> say? Um, well, I guess, I mean, one of the reasons where I'm able, or me and my friends are able to do these things is kind of because we, I mean, we always like to like party and like kind of take ourselves not so seriously but I guess we always kind of stayed on course for our like jobs and yeah school to some extent I guess (laughs) um so and like I suppose some people feel like they need to work in order to, or like they're going to work first and then do some things. And, but I guess I personally feel like it's better, or why not do it now? Like, why wait? Don't wait, I guess. Um, but yeah, 
yeah, I'm not sure I'm the best advice giver. But. Well, that's great. <laughs> that's a great piece of advice. You know, you can think, oh, I'll do yeah. it when I hit this marker. Yeah. You know, when I'm older, when I yeah. you know, have this amount sure. of whatever I saved. Mean, well, at the same time, of course, everyone has like different, everyone has different opportunities and so on. But yeah, if, you, if there's something you really want to do, like, yeah, don't wait. Just go for it. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. I think that's good advice. Yeah, and like, don't be afraid to, to like, go into something and like, yeah, learn about it. Don't care what other people think or say. Um, just throw yourself into it. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try to. <laughs> Yeah, take time. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. Morgan, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Yeah, it's been ha fun being here. Having you on the podcast. Yep. You know, it's come a long way to be here in Southern Illinois. Mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed having you at Union Street Arts, getting to show you around mm -hmm. with what we've got going on here. Yeah, such a great operation here. Like the camp. I missed the camp, unfortunately. But yeah, you have a great setup here thanks man maybe we can have you back for the camp and we'll introduce some of those coding concepts <laughs> and we'll have a a unique uh thing we can offer again because that's what we yeah. like to do maybe maybe it's more of a winter thing i could see that <laughs> well know? i guess the the camp that you just had was inside anyway so yeah well, i could see that winter indoors but i don't we'll know. see we'll see yeah we'll yeah see. let's do it i'm down Let's make it happen. Uh-huh. Now what's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> Where our producer is giving us the wrap up signal. Yeah. Yep. Um but you know, it's again, Morgan, you know, we always love whenever you're able to come to Southern Illinois, you know. Yeah, and, I love coming. Uh, you know, just being able to do all the all the stuff here. You mm -hmm. know, we have we've been eating good. We've been cooking for Sure have. Many days. Yes. You know, we spent a lot of time in the kitchen. Yes. Getting centered around meals. And that's what we've got coming up right now. Yes. Lunchtime. <laughs> so, no, thanks yeah. for being here, Morgan. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having this. me. Is there anything else you want to share with the audience? Anything they can look for? Or just anything at all? Um, I don't know. Just keep checking out Unistry Arts online. Thanks that's for that plug. Say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. Appreciate that plug. And thanks for everybody that is listening and watching to this podcast, the Unitree Podcast. Give us a like, subscribe to this channel. We have a new episode every Friday at noon Central Standard Time. We keep up with what we're up to, interesting, interesting guests like Morgan here. It's been good, Morgan. So thanks for being here. Thanks for doing this. Thanks. <clears throat> thanks. Yeah. And we'll see you in the next one. Until then. Bye.